Congratulations to Aaron on one of the greatest seasons in the history of our sport. I'm grateful that I got to witness it firsthand and share in his magical year, especially given how much respect I have for him as a player and as a person. I hope he can reflect on his extraordinary individual accomplishments and the impact he had on his teammates every single day and use them as fuel for continued excellence in the years to come. And in listening to him talk about what a great guy Judge is, one thing we know about Judge, he doesn't like to talk about himself, right? Post game, it's always about the team. The spotlight tonight is on Aaron Judge, and we'll see how he handles that. Yeah, I, I you know, when, when Judge uh, hit his 60th home run at Yankee Stadium, he wouldn't even come out for an interview because he, he didn't feel that he was the star of the game. That's, that's what he's about. That's why the rest of his teammates love him. It was never about him. It was never about putting the spotlight on him. And uh, I remember on the radio show, I asked Aaron Boone this year about his teacher's pet, and he kind of sheepishly said, it's Aaron Judge. He said, if you're a manager, Aaron Judge is exactly what you want in your clubhouse. He does everything right. He approaches the game the, the right way, the way you, you preach you want your player to approach it. So the one thing that gets me, though, and I wonder if John feels like this when we saw so many of his games, we're sitting here talking about it so cavalierly. He hit 62 home runs. <laughs> yeah. It just doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. And we saw it happen. It wasn't the closest within him. I think Kyle Schwarber was like 17 back mm -hmm. or 20 back, yep. something like that. That kind of underscores how remarkable 62 is. Yeah, and when I, when I read... Aaron Boone's quote with you you know the one thing that jumped out to me again is how Aaron mentioned the impact that Aaron Judge had on his teammates right and his teammates are going to know him on a personal level so they're going to be happy for Aaron Judge the person they witnessed the home runs like we did Michael and they probably were taking it for granted just like we did up in the booth or here in the studio because it just came to be commonplace where you expected good at bat after good at bat night after night probably a home run mixed in there somewhere and you hate to say that you could take a year for granted the way he did it but I can't think of any point during the year where he had a prolonged slump where he was the guy who went away for a little bit he was there from day one yeah he was amazing he was consistent he hit for average he even stole bases yeah. <laughs> probably could have stolen even more next year maybe he does with the, the shorter distance between first and second um, yeah I think he's pretty good <laughs> yeah, and Aaron Boone had that quote, too. And I was thinking about Terry Francona, who talks about Jose Ramirez, his great player, and says when he goes about his business the way he does, it makes my job easier, right, because he's always hustling. If you think about Aaron Boone, and you have Aaron Judge, and he posts every day, he plays every day, and he plays hard every day, all the other players have to follow that lead. So if you're Aaron Boone as a manager, you say, okay, look at my best player, the superstar of the American League MVP. If he goes about it this way, you're all expected to follow suit. That's something that Phil Jackson said when he, when he coached the Bulls. Michael Jordan practiced harder than anybody. So how could you not practice hard if Michael Jordan did it? And Joe Torre said it about Derek Jeter. Derek Jeter's going to run hard to first base four times a game. How could you not do it when your best player, the one with the spotlight on him the most, actually gives you the most? Everybody has to follow suit.